Hey guys, this is Young Taylor Reliance. Welcome back to the channel. I am uh, back up here in the same spot I've been the last two times I went out on adventures. Mainly be, uh, this year's been funny with COVID and being able to get anywhere. This has been a real reliable place for me to get to. But I'm running out of daylight real quick. and uh, I guess this video and kind of the premise of the weekend is on insulating or uh, base layers clothing you know take care of core body temperature um plus sleep gear i'm not going to go into the shelter it's just a standard tent y'all can do that go do your research find out what tent you want and you can do tents you can do tarps you can do natural shelters whatever floats your boat but this is going to be kind of on core body temperature how you you know layering and uh not really a product review, but I am testing out a new piece of kit that I got from Hills People Gear, which is their <coughs> Mountain Serape. Um, so this piece of kit's supposed to do a couple things for me. One, it's it's a poncho liner. Its primary use is going to be as my insulating layer out here. That's what I'm testing. Um, it's made of uh, Primaloft gold, which is supposed to be, you know, weight versus insulating power uh, ratio better than wool. It insulates better when it's wet, when it's wool. This has got some water resistant qualities, but this is closer to the breathable end than the waterproof end. The other thing this it turns into is a great coat. So that's my primary, that's going to be my primary insulation if I need it, is the great coat. Um, and then it's an overbag for my sleep system. That and this is what I'm testing out tonight. I checked the weather. It's supposed to drop down into the 20s tonight and tomorrow night. My typical sleep system. What I carry with me all the time is a snug pack bivy sack. That is with me wherever I go, whether I'm in the desert, in the mountains. This bivy sack is always with me, and it's the first part to my sleep system well it's a part to my sleep system it's probably my primary part being that this is what I carry with me all the time when I need an actual bag I have been using the snug pack jungle bag for about four years now haven't really had an issue with it other than it's not very comfortable at 45 degrees like it says it should be um, you, you, it says here you can comfort 46 and at the low end 36 so what my test here go be on my sleep system getting down into the 20s will this set up with the jungle bag and the hill people's mountain serape be enough to keep me comfortable overnight um and then i got that third piece the bivy sack if i need to put everything inside that to grab a little extra warmth now, full disclaimer, I'm here with my full car kit. Right there, there's the beast. Um, so, if it gets to be where it's unbearable and I'm on the verge of getting sick or whatever, I do have two wool blankets I can throw onto this. But getting down in the 20s, I don't think I'm going to need any of that. I think the sleep system with my silk weight base layer is going to be enough for me tonight. But I just wanted to get this out real quick, kind of start the video. I know it's kind of lame, but I got caught off guard and up here a little late. So I still got to get a uh, fire pit ready and uh, cook dinner. So I will get back at you later. All right, well, this uh, trip ain't kind of turning out the way I had hoped. Um, the National Forest, even though it is way warm and there's no chance of snow, have uh, closed all the National Forest campgrounds up here for the winter. So I was expecting to be doing a uh, camping adventure in a manicured campsite at Woods Canyon Lake. I'd feel comfortable about walking away from my campsite to go fishing when I'm kind of dispersed camping like this. I, I just, I don't. I don't have faith in humanity to leave my shit alone if they happen to drive by. So, um, like I said, I'm, uh, 
intro to this video i was uh we came back to my dispersed camping spot it's easy to get to and being at it ain't middle of summer now there isn't a shit ton of people up here with quads and side by sides running all night i think i seen three campsites on the way in so i'm pretty much out here alone so um my car camping in a manicured in a manicured uh campsite has kind of turned more into an overland adventure i guess but uh got the fire going here let's take a look at it. oh yeah and then this dumbass forgets his uh the most important thing i needed to remember was my stupid tripod and i forgot that at home so i got the tripod for the insta 360 so i'm good there but i don't have the big one for this so bear with me on this but i got my whoop fire started i'm trying to get a good bed of coals going because i have got sorry let me get that in frame i have got over here let's see travel i've got uh where is it at? oh right there boom get that cup out of the way i've got me a petite flamine filet mignon seasoned and ready to go but i need that to develop coals oh. um well just a quick uh, thought so i am telling you what it it takes a it takes a special kind of person to want to come out here isolated just you and nature um i i could feel some anxiety about this not that I'm expecting anything to go wrong, but being out here by yourself kind of puts things in perspective of I really got to pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't injure myself. And, you know, try not to freak out every time a branch breaks in the forest, I guess. So, see how I do through the night. I'll uh, come back at you when I got my uh, steak cooking. guys it's uh oh after 5 30 in the morning 46 degrees just checked it off my garmin and uh here we go uh, bundled up in the serape with my jungle bag and i did not wake up because i was cold now the bag's rated for 46 comfort so I think I could go easily down to freezing with this setup, maybe a little colder, but uh, I know other times that I've been out in this bag where it's been down in the 40s, I was not very, I was cold, I wasn't comfortable. So, I mean, and as a great coat, I used it last night a little bit as a great coat, and uh, it did what it was advertised to do. It uh, was my insulating layer that kept me warm. So, but not really that cold. So I'm gonna have to uh, find another trip where it's gonna be a little colder, so I can really see where I can uh, push the serape to. I'm gonna go back to sleep now, guys, and. Uh, Get up after the sun gets up. Well, good morning, guys. It's a, uh, we're gonna be like a fine morning and a fine day. I decided that I was gonna just make this a day trip and burning off the last little bit of wood I had from the bundle. <laughs> Get, get into the meat and potatoes of kind of why I did this trip, which is to use the Hill People Gears Mountain Serape. Um, it didn't get as cold as it was predicted. It was supposed to get down in the 20s, and it only got down to 46 last night. But, you know, it uh, I, I didn't really need it, but that's because uh, something that Evan Hill said something on his one of his videos is 
um, kind of the traditional way we do layering uh, for our clothing. You know, it's always been a, a base layer, an insulating layer, and a uh, outer layer. Well, I always been a little bit, even from Boy Scouts in the 80s and 90s, I, I, I didn't layer like that. I, I layered with a base layer, and then I layered what would be called a durable layer, which would be your regular clothing, your regular pants, and your regular shirt. So I'd have a lightweight base layer, then my durable layer, and then I would have... Uh, a uh, outer shell and then uh, and then of course the uh, insulating layer if I needed it so what Evan Hill talked about which is what I kind of come up here to put to the test was that insulating layer doesn't need to be worn all the time in cold conditions it's because your body and the way your body works is that um, uh, wind blown across your body through convection will sap you of your heat but if you're building a fire making camp or hiking to your location your body is producing heat metabolically so you really don't need an insulating layer in that situation because your body's going to do what your body does and it's going to produce the heat that you need and when it's too much it's going to start evaporating causing you to sweat and then mistake a lot of people made and I had made this in the past too was I'd wear an insulating layer and hike in it all day or do work in it and then I start sweating my base layer wicks the moisture away and it wicks it right into my insulating layer and now I got a wet insulating layer so basically I was put into test I was put into test his, his thought which are actually I would guess would be more metaphysical fact than thoughts or theory um, that you, you only add the insulating layer when you're static, when you're motionless, when you're not doing, like when you're sleeping or you're sitting around a campfire and it's cold outside and you start to get a chill. You let the windbreakers, the stuff that are a little more waterproof but yet still breathable, you use those to kind of protect you from convection of the wind. And I gotta say, just in this little overnight trip that I've done, that seems to be true. Which now I, I can uh, I can pretty much say that I don't need to carry an insulating layer other than the Hill People Mountain Serape, because um, that's gonna do two things. It's gonna give me a poncho, well, three things: a poncho, a great coat, and then it's gonna give me an outer bag for whatever sleep system I got for the weather I am. And Arizona, it doesn't get that cold. I mean, up in central Arizona, around the Grand Canyon, yeah, it, it drops, you know, below freezing, down around into the teens, five, sometimes below zero. It ain't like Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, where it just gets brutally cold, you know, minus 20. But uh, uh, I just thought I would uh, share that, that Guys, if you're if you're planning on building a clothing system for outdoor recreation, if it's mild temperatures but it's going to get cold, do a silk weight base layer, your durable layer, whatever regular pants, shirts you normally wear, and then some kind of windbreaker. Um, Arterix makes a good one. Hill People Gear makes one that I'm looking into. I'm about you know throw that in my kit right now I use a North Face uh, El Misty 2 raincoat but that will cut the wind just anything that will help stop the convection of wind or the convection of your body heat because of the wind and then a uh, uh, and then you just pack an insulating layer and then when you go static or go down for the night or you're not going to be doing a bunch of work and moving around then you can Add that over the top of your windbreaker, um, unless it's bad weather and wet outside, then you might want to put the windbreaker over your mountain serape. But I'm not saying that that's all you need if you're going to go down to minus 20. The you know you can upgrade your base layer uh, from a silk weight to a heavier fleece weight um, for the colder conditions. 
Um, you can always go with an insulated uh, kind of outer jacket as well, but uh, I'm not going to speak too much on the colder weather because I don't really experience that much. Yeah, I'll get, there'll be, in about a month from now, there'll be a couple inches of snow sitting right here where we're at, and uh, it will be down into the teens, into the aughts um, at night, and, uh, you know, that's the worst I got to prepare for. So I, I think I can do that with what I've gotten, with what I've learned from Evan Hill at Hill People Gear off his video. And I, guys, I suggest you you go through to their to their channel. Outside their gear reviews or product reviews of, of the stuff that they're trying to sell, they've got a lot of good informational videos on there about uh, outdoors and surviving in the outdoors. But uh. Yeah, here. Oh. I will get back with you guys later. Um, I just wanted to get in the meat and potatoes of that. So remember, base layer, durable layer, outer layer, preferably a shell, something to cut the wind out, and then you pack an insulating layer for when you become static. Hope this has been helpful for you guys. I've uh, kind of enjoyed this trip. Uh, I, I was a little disappointed to find out that the campsite that I wanted was closed down for the winter, so a little bummed out about that, but uh, I'll get there next year when they open up. Um, I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, I, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. I was trying to get some uh, aerial footage of the Hill People Gear Mountain Serape in the great code mode and in the poncho mode walking through the forest apparently this multicam is so good that it throws off the tracking software in my drone because i get within a couple of feet of trees like that and it loses me so i did get some aerial shots that i'm going to include um but for the most part, I, I want to leave you guys with this. I know Helicon Techs makes a a uh, very similar, very uh, multi-use piece of gear like this. Um, they're a Polish company, but they use Chinese manufacturing. And I'm just saying, you know, the older you get, and the more you, and I hate bringing up politics because it's such a stupid thing to do, but... Um, uh, once you are aware of politics and economic uh, stuff going on in our country and around the world, you know what? This here is made in the U.S. It was developed by people here in the U.S. and and uh, prices seventy five dollars higher. But I think you get better insulation uh, with the Primaloft Gold in here. Um, I did fine last night. Granted, it was only forty six degrees. Um, but I also do kind of understand if, uh, you know, you're on a budget and you had to save up your nickels and dimes for the, uh, you know, and yeah, that's not going good now. Um, uh, when you're on a budget and you've been saving up your nickels and dimes for that $134 Helicon Tech Swagman roll, I would encourage you to save a couple more weeks couple more months of uh, nickels and dimes and and do the uh, the uh, hill people gear mountain serape uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, the, still ironing out bugs with my equipment and software and stuff so I just I can't seem to get a handle on getting a good template down for these videos but I'll get her figured out